So in this video, we're going to add some sounds. Uh, just a sound that plays in the background. So we've got some, mu some music playing uh, and a sound that occurs when we pick up this little pickup. Uh, we'll leave the end goal for the final video. Um, okay, so we've managed to get the player moving around uh, and we've managed to get the uh, player to pick up this little object and, and when they do it disappears from the screen. <coughs> when they do pick it up we want the sound to play then. So that's the sound we'll, um, we'll, we'll add shortly. Uh, in a similar way we'll add the sound that plays in the background but that's a little bit more straightforward so we'll start with that. Um, I've got some sounds, you'll find links to them on Moodle uh, in, the, in the zip file. Um, and all we do is we need to actually attach the sounds to an object. So we're going to create that object first. Uh, and the type of object we're going to add is called empty. And we're just going to have uh, plain axes like that. So it, it's nothing. It's not an object or anything like that. It just is a little empty item. Oops, let's try and not move everything else. So, with the empty, I'm just going to pop it away from the game world and uh, let's give it a name. Let's call it uh, Ambience Music so we know what it is. And um, to it, we're going to attach a, a, an always sensor. And over here, we're going to add. Uh, a sound actuator. Uh, and we'll join those two up. There we go. And here we can open our sounds, and the sound we're going to use here is music.mp3. So open that up. And you can see here we've got this. That. We've got this play mode. We want it to keep going. So it's a sound loop I've got from Flash Kit. I'm sure you can find your own if you have a good look. Uh, and we're going to choose Loop End. And so hopefully, if we play that, lovely. fantastic bit of background music. Um, just in case it does start to get on your nerves then of course you can um, you can turn the volume down uh, while you're messing with other things. Um, so there we go. So that's adding just background sound. Now it's generally good practice to add your sounds to a new layer so they don't interfere with any of the rest of the game. And the way we do that is we select it which we've done so over here, so right click it and just press M for uh, mouse and we've got move to layer at the moment this shaded one is our current layer where all our game world is uh, so I'm just going to move it to um, to the next one along there we go um, if you're starting to wonder where these things are and you think oh I might, get, I might lose that, how do I get it back just here under the main view window we've got the ability to switch between layers. So as soon as we click there, we can see there's our little ambient music thing. Okay. The next sound we're going to make is a little bit more complicated, uh, but it starts off in exactly the same way. So what we'll do is we'll, may as well, on that new layer, add another empty. Okay, and this one I'm going to call this pickup sound, which is the sound that the pickup makes when when that uh, when that gets picked up. Uh, and again, we'll add an always and uh, sound over here like that. Okay, and the sound I want to play this time. 
is going to be uh, Bing. Bing. I'm just going to delete that 001 up there. I think it's because there's already a Bing in my library somewhere. Um, play mode. Play end. Okay, so that's just going to play the sound once through. And um, we'll just change the name of this. So this is going to be the trigger. And that should play the sound. Uh, but uh, we need it to be triggered off. So we need to just set this tap button to on. And then go back to our normal layer, our game layer, by pressing this button here. Right click on the sphere. And to our collision, we're just going to add a new actuator, which is uh, edit object. So in this edit object, we're making the sphere disappear. But as soon as that's disappeared, if we add the sound here to the collision, it won't play because as soon as the sphere has disappeared, the sound goes with it. So what we need to do is we need to spawn the sound. So the sound plays, you know, at the instant that the sphere is picked up. So we're going to drag that to there. So connect that up. And instead of an, uh, uh, an end object, as we've done here, which makes the object disappear, this time we've got an add object. And the object we're going to add, I haven't guessed already, is a pickup sound. There we go. The time value, now these games run at around 120 frames per second, which means for every second of sound we need 120 in here. The, the sound that I'm using lasts about one second, so I'm going to put in 120. Press tap. Okay. And just like everything else. We'll give it a little test. So hopefully, there we go. So we'll try that all together. So we'll look back at this layer here. There. Okay. Right, he likes our original, uh, our our pickup sound, but not our background music. So what I'm going to do here, I think, is move that. I'll try moving that to a separate layer. Back to our original layer. Okay. So, after a bit of investigation, there it seems that if we move the ambient sound, the background music, onto the game layer and leave our pickup sound on that second layer. When we test it, we've got that wonderful background music and we've got our pickup. So we we'll save that file, just escape from the game, file and save. And in the next video we'll have a look at ending the game.